Yeah, my name is Rachel Peterson Wynn. I'm a pediatrician and I work at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I've been there for 15 years as a pediatrician. And for 10 years, I've been also uh, running an ADHD referral clinic for children. So I see kids ages four that are aged four up to 18. Uh, for concerns of possible ADHD or other mental health concerns. Um, I've worked with the REACH Institute teaching about mental health in the primary care setting also for about 10 years. Uh, so I love all of that work I get to do. Yeah, so the REACH Institute uh, was founded with the purpose of bringing excellent mental health care mental health care that's evidence-based to more and more children and their families. Um, and in order to do that, we help train primary care providers. So pediatricians, family practice uh, physicians, uh, nurse practitioners, physician assistants who work in a primary care setting to be able to provide good mental health care and good mental health assessments in the primary care setting uh, we know that's important because there's such a shortage of mental health care available for kids that are struggling uh, right now. Uh, so we want to get as many people up to speed as possible on providing this good mental health assessment and care. Yeah, so uh, it's somewhere around eight to 10% of children um, have been diagnosed with ADHD. Uh, and so that's a large number of children. It's a number of children in each classroom, um, in a primary care practice or in families. Uh, the, the odds of having a child with ADHD are, are around that eight to 10%. Um, and so it's common. Yes, so ADHD and many other mental health disorders are linked. So uh, if you have been diagnosed with ADHD in childhood, the odds that you may get diagnosed with an anxiety disorder or depression or substance use disorder can be increased. Uh, so definitely ADHD and depression, especially as kids get into the age of adolescence can go together. So um, I will say in young ages, anxiety disorder and ADHD can be very hard to differentiate. And what makes it really challenging is that both can be happening at the same time. So that can make it really difficult. Uh, and then as kids get older, um, anxiety disorder or depression can look very similar to symptoms of ADHD. Um, and at any of those ages, learning disorder can uh, lead to a lot of difficulty in the school setting that can look similar to ADHD. Um, and then as mental health or as uh, medical providers, we also have to think about medical things like not enough sleep um, or not getting adequate nutrition or things like that, or a hearing problem that might look similar to ADHD. Yeah. So some that I hear parents are worried about or that sometimes grandparents or just one parent might be worried that we're putting a label on something that's just a normal part of childhood. And, uh, and what we, we, we really want to be clear about is that, that, yeah, being distracted or inattentive or hyperactive is a very normal part of childhood. But when it gets to be to the point that it gets in the way of doing things like learning or having good relationships with friends, um, then you know that's a disorder. So we need to help with that. Um, other misconceptions are that it's just something we worry about in the school setting that we just want kids to sit still in school and we want them to get good grades. Uh, so those are some of the misconceptions. So the advice I would give to healthcare providers is to become comfortable with other things that might look like ADHD, 
especially anxiety disorder and depression and substance use disorder. Uh, the thing that's helped me most in my practice is, especially at younger ages, learning how to assess for an anxiety disorder has been really important. And then in adolescence, learning how to um, do good assessment for depression or anxiety disorder has been really helpful. Um, I do that by using a lot of screening tools. And for anxiety disorder, we do things like use the SCARED questionnaire. And for depression, we use things like the PHQ-9. Uh, and there's a specific version of that for adolescents. So that's really helpful. Um, there's also a lot of good information out there. There's a lot of information out there when it comes to ADHD, but there's a lot of good information out there. And, uh, you know, with the teaching that I get to do with the REACH Institute, um, as I feel like that's fantastic information. It's all evidence-based. Uh, and we'll be doing a webinar uh, for ADHD on October 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, with, with a lot of experts, not just from the medical field, but experts um, talking to parents, families, and uh, medical providers and educators about ADHD.